Hi everybody, John Cena here and welcome to FunQuest Season 2 Semi-Final 2. And if you have been listening so far, you will know that there are two ladies through to the semi-final. So one of these is going to get through to the final. And it could be Anne, it could be Sarah, I don't know. You've got to keep listening to, to, to find out how to vote. So with that said, uh, Anne will tell me who you are, where you're from and what you do. I'm Anne Smith. I live in Barrie, Ontario, Canada, and I am a professional actress and an amateur metal detectorist. So, uh, Sarah, tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do. I am Sarah Elkins, and I'm calling in from Helena, Montana, but that's not where I'm originally from. And I'm a communication coach and Gallup certified StrengthsFinder coach. So I do keynotes and workshops, and I help people uncover the stories that they need to share with others to create inspiration and motivation. And I use storytelling as the foundation of my work. Well, I'm sure we're going to get some storytelling here because if you've not listened to the show before, uh, if you are listening on uh, Spreaker or iHeartRadio or any of those things, you probably can't see my screen. There are four icons along the top, five rows down the side, and these two lady funksters have to take in turns to pick an icon which will show a question. They get one minute to answer that question or tell a story or tell a joke or just do something for a minute. Uh, and then that time up and uh, we'll go on to the next function at the end of the five questions you can decide who goes through and I'll tell you how to do that at the end so because you are such an order in my screen it makes no difference who goes first uh, and I'll ask you to go first question one. Oh, this is a rough choice because I simply love strawberry shortcake and make an exceptionally good one if I say so myself and I'm a Leo so the lion uh, I'm gonna choose the colored balls <laughs> Okay, good. That Next was one. funky, Anne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, who always seems to win when you play a game? This is rough because it depends on the game. Um, I am remarkably competitive, as you may have figured out, but um, I'm also really bad at physical games. I'm, I'm a klutz, an unabashed klutz. And so if it's anything physical, like bocce or tennis, or yeah, forget it. My husband always wins, even at mini golf. But if it's something like Trivial Pursuit, I'm, I'm pretty hard to beat. If you put my brother and me together on a game of Trivial Pursuit, you might as well go home right now. Sarah, question one. I think I'll take a lion. A lion. Who comes when you call? <laughs> my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if I have food in my hand. Yep. So I have a giant chocolate lab mix. Wherever I am in the house, he is by my side. I had to actually kick him out of this room and close the door because he would have been right under my feet and mm -hmm. while that's usually not a problem we have hardwood floors so sometimes when i'm recording and he does his little circle thing where you hear his feet on the floor yeah anyway so he my dog comes when i call sarah question two well if i'm going to go along with the animals let's go for the elephants elephants what was your first car oh my gosh i love this question I had a gold VW bug. It was a super beetle with a sunroof. It was 1974 bug. And I drove it in high school and college. And I actually, uh, it was kind of a hand-me-down from my brother. I bought it from my brother when he upgraded to a Jeep. And um, everyone knew it was my car. So I lived in Fort Collins, Colorado for school. Mm -hmm. And when I would stop at a light and I'd smile at people because I just had this exuberance. I, I still kind of have it, but not nearly to that extent. And I would literally get um, a, a flower on my windshield or a note saying they saw my smile and it would always be anonymous. And um, some of my friends, they would know if I was at the grocery store, they'd leave me a note on my car. Um, so my, my first car was a 1974 gold Super Beetle with a sunroof. And question two. I'm a big fan of sneakers, so I will take the running shoes. Okay. Favorite crime show on TV now? That uh, this, is, this is interesting because um, a lot of the filming that I do myself is crime, true crime reenactment, Ooh. where it's, it's like a docudrama series where they in, interview the actual people who are related to the case, and then the actors reenact the, the situations. And in fact, I'm... I'm filming one next week in which I become the murder victim, which, you know, I, I get to die for my art, which um, fortunately is very safe in, in my world. But as far as watching, 
I have to say, I loved the CSI segment when Lawrence Fishburne was in it. Uh, somehow he just, there was something about his character that, that just grew and, um, and, and distressed me and fascinated me at the same time. Fishburne, it was that the, the straight up CSI? Yes. We're probably a bit behind you, but I can't, I don't. It was years ago. Yeah. Yeah, he was on for two or three seasons. Fishburne, yeah. And he started out very cuddly and, and warm and, and became cons considerably darker as it went on. I always do. Question three, Anne. <laughs> I, I'm going to take the hand petting the frog. The little toad frog. Yes, um, I love toads. Which instrument do you wish you could play? <laughs> you probably play all of them, right? And no, I, I use a bunch of instruments. I do not play any of them. I, uh, this is a, a sticking point between my husband and me. I have a cupboard full of instruments I want to play, wish I could play, tried to play, got fed up. I, I learned the Celtic harp. I have a saxophone. I sold my trombone. I have recorders. I just, I, do you know the, the instrument I would really like to play is the bassoon. bassoon. It, sound, it sounds like a grumpy old curmudgeon. Yeah. <laughs> but but I would like to play jazz bassoon. If you, just, if, you can, if you can figure out how to play bassoon jazz, you can have a show all of your own. <laughs> the juxtaposition of jazz and grumpy old curmudgeon just makes me want to sing. <laughs> Better question uh, three. Oh, let's go with the strawberries. Which famous landmarks have you been to? Oh, well, I could start counting. I've been to Glacier National Park and Yellowstone National Park. So the, um, the famous geyser at Yellowstone and up on the Going to the Sun Road in, in Glacier National Park. I've been to the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, um, the Colosseum in Rome. Ooh. I've been to the Nîmes Colosseum. In France? Um, and the, the, yes, the, the in France. Thing, the mm -hmm. I've thing. been to... The, I was on the London, what is that, the like London Ferris Eye. wheel? The, the Ferris the, wheel. London Eye. Yeah, yes, I, yeah. I've been on yeah. that. Um, yeah. And we actually took that boat trip up to Greenwich. Nice. Saw the Cuddy Sark. Nice. So, uh, let's see, what other famous landmarks? Of course, New York City. I was actually standing on the Twin Towers on their observation deck in, that would have been 1985. So, yeah, lots of excellent. landmarks. Oh, Good. and the Hollywood Bowl. Got to add Good that list. in. Good list. Who oh, is it? Question four, and it is Sarah. Oh, the piano. I'm piano. a musician. I don't play the piano, by the way, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. I'm not that coordinated. I'm lucky if I can sing and play the tambourine at the same time. <laughs> I'm pretty Here excited. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time you drank a pint of milk? A pint of milk? Yeah. I drink a glass of milk sometimes at night to help me sleep. But I don't know about a pint. That seems like a lot. So probably elementary school, school when you could buy one for a nickel. <laughs> yeah. They used to come around and put them on your table. Yes. Or you'd go through the line. My mom would make me a lunch in my lunchbox and she would tape a nickel or a dime or a quarter as it went up in price when we lived in LA. And yeah. she'd tape it on the inside of my lunchbox so that I would have it when it was time to buy my milk. So no, that's it's... pretty vivid memory, actually. It, it went from a nickel when I started in elementary school up to a quarter. How much is it now? I have no idea. I don't think they buy it like that anymore. Uh, uh, now, I do love rich, full cream, but I wouldn't drink a pint of it. Blue top, <laughs> blue top, blue top, green top, whatever else top. Uh, question four, are we on? Um, uh, you got some grapes, some wedding spread, or a surprised looking young lady. Yeah, well, I'm a bit of a blurter. So this is like, oops. Yeah, I'll take that. The surprise girl. Huh? <laughs> Where do you learn to swim? Oh, say, this, this has a story attached to it. When I was about seven, I went to summer camp and hated every minute of it, except for archery, which I, I got a bullseye on my first arrow. But I learned to swim there off the dock in Georgian Bay which is part of Lake Huron, which is one of our great lakes in Canada. I learned to swim by thinking I could swim, jumping off, trying to tread water, and having to be rescued. 
with the big pole. So yeah, I learned to swim by nearly drowning. Excellent. Then as part of the, oh gosh, this is how old I am. As part of the Canada Centennial thing in 1960, put in a swimming pool. And I actually took swimming lessons there when I was little. So yeah. nice. is it common to learn in lake? Swimming? Uh, yeah, back then in the uh, in the Mesozoic period, it certainly was. <laughs> uh, and question five. Uh, what's that one on the right? It looks very funky. Oh, it's a cyclist. A okay. mountain biker. I'm, I'm going to be the second one in. Yes. This, this, this fish. What's the best thing about your life? Oh, the best thing about my life is that I am alive and living in the 21st century. I have to say that if I were living in the 15th, 16th, 17th century, I'd probably be dead by now. Yeah. Um, there's a reason that women suffer menopause as because because they live long enough now. It used to be that you would have been dead from having too many children or, or having a you know septic shock from cutting your foot on something or, or measles. I mean, this is a wonderful time to be alive. The best thing about my life is that I'm alive now. That's a good answer. Yeah, when when women, can, women can do, they, they're not just baby machines. They can do what is needed to, to fulfill their lives as well as others. That's a good answer. Thank yeah. you. Well, we never, well, we don't think about stuff like that. And that's the whole purpose of the show, to get interesting stuff out that we've never even told on yep. Google. Question five, uh, Sarah. Um, let's go with geography. The world map <laughs> sure. or the mountains? The world map. World map. I, I know you thought I would pick the world map, but I'm pulling a switcheroo just like Anne did on that first. <laughs> you wrote a check. And I wrote a check. Oh, um, I was putting down a deposit for our floors to be refinished, and they take checks for that. Really? I know. It's shocking. I had to actually not only write a check, but put it in the mail with a stamp on it for a local company, but he wanted it to arrive in his P.O. box. One of the things that shocked me when I moved to Montana, now 21 years ago, we moved from Washington, D.C. to Helena, Montana, and we drove across the country in a 24-foot truck with a 20-foot car trailer on it with a car on top and a six month old baby. We're driving across the country from DC and we stopped in Eastern Montana to get gas. And I remember seeing a sign on the window that said local checks only. And I remember looking at my husband in shock. They take checks <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, at a gas good. station. Right, good, right. So uh, as we alluded to in the show, this is all about getting ideas by listening to people that you wouldn't normally listen to and things that you wouldn't normally talk about. So, uh, who won? Who's going to go through to the final? I don't know, because they're both very funky ladies. You have got to, uh, listener, leave a comment on this episode. Show notes with who you think should go through. And uh, you've got to go to funkythinkers.com, find the episode, and leave a comment. Don't leave it on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or iHeartRadio or Spreaker or any of those things. Leave it on funkythinkers.com and the one with the most votes will go through to the season two final. Ladies, Ooh. thank you so much for being on and uh, how can we contact you and find out more about you? You can find out all about me on my website, which is anti.ca, A-N-T-I-E dot C-A. It will lead you everywhere. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, Sarah, how can we find out more about you? I am at elkinsconsulting.com, E-L-K-I-N-S consulting.com. And you can learn about the book that I published this year and find out more about the audio book that will be available sometime this fall that will include two music um, tracks, two songs as bonus tracks for people who purchase the audio book. Excellent. Ladies, thank you so much for being on. And we'll see one of you in the final. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Hi, thanks so much for making it to the end of this episode. Did you know that you can play Funk Quest yourself? We call it FQY. You can get going now with a 10% discount coupon that's displayed above my shoulder. Thanks so much and take care.